So Professor Jair Coiler likes to say that in mathematics, sometimes you are told to do X, you rebelliously uh, do Y, and sometimes you drop Y and end up accomplishing what you don't expect, Z. Okay, so here's an, expect, uh, an example of Z. Uh, remember in the previous video, we were actually looking at a triangle ABC and asking the question of what is the locus of centers of circum circumellipses uh, whose area is the same as the circumcircle area. Okay, so here's a circumcircle. Here's a point Q, which happens to be on this orange locus. And here's a circumellipse circum centered on Q. So circumellipse means it's an ellipse that passes through the three vertices of this reference triangle ABC. Now, uh, Bernard Gibert and Peter Moses independently derived uh, this locus, this orange locus here, and this orange locus is this interesting sextic curve on the bariocentric of a point in the plane of the triangle. Now, now I had thought, <coughs> okay, so first of all, let me make the following remark. Uh, the set of points in the plane of a triangle, uh, uh, which are centers of circumellipses, not circumparabolas, not circumhyperbolas, is actually, com it comprises the interior of the medial triangle and these regions out here so there's these other three regions here that comprise possible positions for centers of circumconics which are ellipses okay very well now you can see here that the locus the sextic locus is safely within the uh, interior of the medial and it looks like it actually has two small loops not two three small loops that uh, go through the vertices of the medial triangle and out. So GeoGebra is actually not computing these very well, but there's going to be three small loops out here. And anywhere Q is placed, including this outer small loop here region, you're going to get an ellipse right here whose area is the same as the area of the, circum, um, the circumcircle. Okay? So what I did here is in ge GeoGebra, I've attached Q to this locus, and you know that this is not very numerically stable, but you can actually get an idea by sliding Q on the locus, and you can look at the circumellipses that all have the same area. Okay, so let's go to this down branch here. And by the way, I can also go near X3, which is in the locus, and if, if my point Q is on X3, what I end up reconstructing is a circumcircle itself. Okay, very well. So this is pretty nice dynamics. This is an unimaginable result uh, that can be accomplished with zero programming in GeoGebra, GeoGebra uh, these days, which, you know, just a short five, ten years ago, you had to write a lot of code to do something like this. Okay, so what did I stumble upon? What is my Z here? Coiler's Z, if I may call it that way. We had seen in the previous video that the center of those five circumellipses uh, that are described in video four, they lied on a permutation uh, uh, Steinerian ellipse, right? Now, what I did here was I just uh, said, and I forced my luck and said, if I take any point Q, not exactly X3, for example, if Q is equal to X3, this goes back to our previous video, right? So if I permute X3, in the previous video, I had shown this ellipse as a red ellipse, and I said, hey, the five permutations of X3 are the centers of those five equal area special circum ellipses, and they also coincide with points on the orange curve. So I made the following uh, generalization here. I tried it. I didn't know if it was going to work, but it, it worked. I said, if I take any point Q on this curve and I compute its barycentric permutations, are these permutations going to fall on the same sextic? And much to my surprise, they do. So let me zoom in a bit. So what this amounts to affirming is that this sextic is in fact closed under barycentric permutation. So you take any point on it, Oh, now you can see the three loops quite well. Here's one, here's two, here's three. All of them lie within these legal regions of uh, uh, circum, circum ellipse centers. Okay. Now, here's what I mean by closedness. And I'm drawing this blue ellipse as well because this is like you know the 
the previous uh, affirmation that if you take any point in the plane of a triangle and you permute its biocentrics, they, they're going to lie on an ellipse that is homothetic to the Steiner circumellipse of a triangle. So this continues to hold. But what we're seeing here is that there's this closedness, this group theoretic closedness, not uh, unlike, you know, the concept of self-isogonality of certain triangle cubics, meaning that you take the isogonal conjugate of any point in some of the triangle cubics, the self-isogonal ones, and it falls on the same cubic. So here, what we're saying is you take any point on the sextic, you compute its barycentric permutations, and you find five points on the sextic. So it's closed under permutations. So I can go all the way to the loop here. It's funny that if I'm on the loop, looks like all the other five are on loops as well. Okay. And when I go in, I have them inside of my sextic. So now I'm in this bottom area here. So anyway, guys, I thought this was pretty pleasing. Uh, some wild generalization, Z, that held. And uh, thank you very much.